Well, it's another beautiful morning in Naples. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it looks like it's going to be another beautiful day. Well, we'll take that. I love getting up out, you know, early. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a great day for us to go visit another one of our favorite morning stops. Okay. And we always have new things to update on with our real estate work so we can have a chat about some of the new trends and what's happening. But in the meantime, let's share where we're going with our viewers and our friends and we'll take off now and head downtown and see where we land. Let's take a little drive. Yeah, I need a tea or a coffee for you. Oh yeah. What do you think? All right. All right, let's off we go. All, All right. right. Are you ready to go? See you there. Here we are. That was a nice little ride. Yeah, it was. Well, I'm Terry with MVP Realty. I'm Rich with MVP Realty. And, and you know, the nice thing about, we were able to take out the, the fun car this morning because we were all by ourselves and we just wanted to come on out and get ourselves a little morning refreshment or a coffee and you got yourself a fancy bowl. Oh, wait till I show you what I have. We, is, we are at the bowl. The bowl. The bowl. Yeah. And yeah. here is my breakfast, right. a pitaya bowl. And it's got all kinds of healthy goodies on there. Right. I can't wait to have that. Here's my healthy breakfast, a nice uh, Oh, a cup nice of cup coffee. of black coffee, yeah. huh? Yep. So yep. you're ready as well. Oh, well, yeah. The bowl is fun because they have multiple locations. Yep. Uh, two here in Naples. We're on Central Avenue. Right. And I do hear some of the construction and things behind us because things are continuing to evolve and build okay. here. And it's just a growing area just at the edge of downtown Naples. So this is a great location. It's amazing what's going on between here and Fifth Avenue. All of the new stuff that's coming in. So it's, we'll have to highlight that. And there's stuff they haven't even broken ground on yet. In so. addition to this location for the bowl, mm -hmm. they're also up on Pine Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. So that's really convenient in the more midsection of Naples. Right. And they've even opened up at... Um, right near FGCU in Estero. Oh, so they're yeah. right on the, the edge of the campus and bowls are super popular. So here's another local growing business right. and it's really fun. We'll have to show people around inside and let them see just some of what the bowl looks like. It's a real fun place to come, whether you sit outside like we are today or whether you go inside and, and cool off a little bit and enjoy one of these bowls yep. or a coffee or a kombucha. They have and all you kinds know, of stuff. The, the, the nice thing about this area, and you know, depending upon where you live, we do not have a lot of chain restaurants and eateries. Um, we, we have the, the usuals, have you know. We have the Starbucks and we have, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the normal things that you would find in other, but most of our restaurants most of our coffee shops, uh, they're all going to be locally owned. Uh, you know, you'd call them mom and pops, but these guys, like some of these chefs, are absolutely amazing chefs. Uh, so when you go out to dinner here, you're not going to find the, the same, you know, Outback Steakhouse. We got it. We have it. And that's usually where we're people who come here on vacation want to go. Uh, well, we try to show people some of the options. It's yeah. kind of a fun thing to know in Naples yeah. where the insiders go and There's just the locals so go. There's so many fantastic So we're happy to, to kind to. of visit this one so, today. Yeah. Absolutely happy to. But, you know, while we're out and about, I think it's a good time for us to just do a little recap for our, you know, real estate planning, some of what we're doing. And a lot of times what we'll do midweek is try to take a look at what's coming out in terms of new and fresh information so that we stay current and it helps us obviously in conversations with our customers right and I have just about three short little pieces today that all came from Realtor magazine in the spring 2023 issue and we'll, we can just comment on whether we're seeing these trends hold up in our market or what might be different here in Naples and Southwest Florida how's that for a real a estate plan? news and our view that's yeah. right <laughs> so we're gonna tackle that now, the first one is there's a chart here in this uh, spring journal that talks about work from home needs. And as you might have guessed, 
The chart shows that the need peaked in the spring of 2022. Do you wonder why? It, it was just really high. It was like almost half of all homes. It was getting up there. And people were definitely saying, I need space to work from home. Mm -hmm. It has tempered a little bit in mm -hmm. the last year, but it is holding really steady since the summer last year right. at about 33%. So at least a third of people are saying, as they choose what they want for their home, mm -hmm. the functionality should include a way to work from home. And I think that could be maybe some of the time versus all of the time. Well, we've seen that with, you know, when we take people out, um, regardless of the age group, they're always looking for where do we put the office. And, right. and a lot of times, do we need two offices? You know, one for him, one for her, uh, because, you know, when someone's on the phone and I can't do, so people are, you know, that's a, a big priority for what people right. are looking for. And I think it still is in our market as well. So I can agree with this trend. And in fact, it may be for us a little more than 33%. Yeah. Because I think part of what is uh, definitely a trend in terms of Naples and Southwest Florida is that people are realizing that they may want to be here for the long term, mm -hmm. but they don't have to wait. Right. Because if they can work from home, if they can work from anywhere, right. then they don't have to put off until a retirement age, coming to a place where they have 12 months a year of outdoor opportunity, right. sports and activities and great lifestyle, arts and, and so many other things, right. they can come here now, and they are. They are. So we're seeing the age range change mm -hmm. of our customer mix, right. and it's more diverse, right. which is you know kind of a signal of that. and then those people in particular, because they're still working all the time or some of the time, right. want some kind of work from home opportunity, even if that's flex space. They may right. not always say, I want that office to look like my formal office, but I right. want the capability and maybe I need a pull out couch exactly. because it's the extra room when yep. somebody comes to visit and I can convert and, that and into they, sleeping space. They have made some huge advancements in uh, the way furniture can be made. And we've seen some of this stuff from like places like California closets oh, or whatever. Absolutely. That it's, it's a beautiful office. And then all of a sudden it turns into a bed. It's amazing. Right. So, and so yeah. you have a lot of multifunctional. Yeah. Yep. So I'd say for this first piece, you know, we definitely see the trend of work from home, work from anywhere. And the appeal of Naples links up with that and aligns with that really, really well. It sure does. So I think that for us, I think that trend's going to continue. And we see it, you know, and we're, it's, absolutely. it's not just a graph. We see it. In, in our, and, and week every by week day. and yeah. every month and the calls we get. So absolutely. Now, for our little kind of topic number two within this Realtor magazine, the next one that they talked about was multi-generational homes and yes. who's buying them. Yes. And one of the things that's interesting is that 15% of even first-time home buyers are looking for multi-generational capability in their home. Mm -hmm. And about 14%, pretty much the same amount, of repeat home buyers are looking for multi-generational capabilities, sometimes for different reasons. Right. And the age point of who's a first time buyer looking for a multi-gen home right. versus a repeat buyer obviously is different. In the mid thirties, there is that average or, or median age of people who are first time home buyers right. who are looking for multi-generational capability. And it's someone in their late fifties often as a repeat buyer because they have a different need. Sure. They may have aging parents and they may have well, that, adult children that's where the 36 year old is probably looking more at multi-generational, the parent there, or maybe people who are 18 who never moved out yet. And um, so there's a lot of these needs for how do I accommodate lots of adults in the house? So it's interesting to think about that multi-generational housing need and how do we see it show up here in Southwest Florida? Well, we see some of it because uh, when people want to move here, they can work from here, uh, but they don't want to leave their parents up in the snow. So they say, hey, you know, why don't you guys come with us? Sometimes they'll get two different properties. Sometimes they'll try to get one property uh, and see what they can do. A lot of times they'll, they'll maybe try to just go into the same community with two different uh, products of housing. Well, you know, that's a really interesting point. And a lot of communities here are very uh, capable of, of kind of accommodating multiple needs. Right. So it, as you're saying that, it makes me think about maybe somebody buying a primary single family home and if it's either an adult child or it's 
you know, aging parents, maybe they don't need as much space, but they're still looking for independence. Right. A lot of our communities that have these single family homes also offer coach homes mm -hmm. or condos or paired villas. Right. And being in the same community means you can kind of spend some time, which is one of the major reasons that's cited in the article. People mm -hmm. want to spend more time with their relatives of multiple generations. Right. And you can keep an eye on people who may be having some special needs, especially elderly right. folks. And yet everybody has a door to close, right. a roof over their head, maybe right. extra garage right. space that they can have their car and independence. Yep. While you mom know, and dad are out playing pickleball, you can be in your nice office working away. That's you know. true, too. And, you right. know, we also see it in the other direction where sometimes the parents move down and their, their kids come down to visit ah, and they yeah. say, hey, you know, I wonder... <laughs> I think, I think we can work from home. We, we so, can come here. So we've had it in both directions, where first the parents come down and the kids follow, or first the kids come down and want to bring down the parents. So. Absolutely. So it certainly is happening here, maybe with some variations, because when you read the article, you would be thinking about a multi-generational home being one structure, one property. I think we're seeing it a lot as the companion properties mm -hmm. and very nearby properties, often in the same community. Right. So um, that's maybe our spin on it. Yep, for the multi grandkids get in the golf cart and they just drive over to, to grandma's house for some cookies and, you know. Hop in the pool or whatever's <laughs> going on. So that's a good one. So I think multi-generational um, conversations are, again, going to be on the rise. Yes. Because people really also have more buying power if there are multiple incomes. Right. And with those different generations, sometimes multiple generations are contributing to the purchase. Sure. And then everybody can kind of have a situation that works out pretty well for right. them. That's great. Now, there's one more article in here that reminds me of some things we saw a year or two ago. So this is an interesting update. It says home trends and the article title is Making Big Moves. And it's talking about migration that has had a ripple effect in cities and towns across America, mm -hmm. partly because of what's happened over the last few years. And the big question is, will it continue? Right. And then they talk about states that seem to be really popular as the top 10 places that people are coming to. There's a trend there. There is a trend. And, you know, as you can imagine, this is from the U.S. Census Bureau. So the data they're quoting is the official data. Right. Um, and then they can go back and look at the change at this point between 2021 and 22. That's as recent as the data are. Um, as you can imagine, some of the states that people are coming to are warm weather states. And mm -hmm. I see just glancing at the top 10 list, Alabama, Arizona, Georgia, Tennessee. Right. You know, yeah, you would think kind of moderate weather mm -hmm. and maybe reasonable cost of living, that right. kind of thing. But when you get up into the top three or four, um, then I think of the ones that people really talk about wanting to move to. Sure. Uh, Carolinas, does that right. surprise you? They hold Not spots three and four nope. uh, for South and North Carolina. Right. And again, kind of nice weather, change of seasons if people want it. Right. Um, and, and, they're, they're and they getting, have the ocean. You and know, they do I have mean, access to like, water like, and, and yeah. mountains. And mountains. So you have, a, you know, whatever you like, you can do both. Right. Now, beating them out, and maybe not surprising, because we've seen a big trend toward this in recent years, Texas. Right. Texas holds the number two spot in the Census Bureau data, right. and it is the second most popular place that people are moving into rather than moving away from. There's some very big um, manufacturing that's moving into Texas, and there's a lot of tech in so there's Texas. there's jobs. So there's plenty of jobs. and. People are, you know, some companies are moving out of uh, states West. that may not be as tax friendly as right. as uh, other states are. So uh, that's why they're and, and the land is very inexpensive. And so, there's plenty of it, right? There's plenty of it. <laughs> they still have exactly. a lot of room to expand. Uh, you know. But what beats it? What beats it? Yes. The it's, number one state right. of people moving to compared to all those others, which have beautiful reasons to move to. Right. That's, but there's one that is outpacing them all. And it's Florida. Florida. You know? <clears throat> and are you surprised? No, not a bit. I mean, because we have the only thing that we do not have is mountains. <laughs> well, probably up near the Georgia border, uh, there's yeah, maybe a yeah. little bit there's, of there's a, there's hilly a bit, area you know. on but, the way yeah, to Georgia. Our, our mountains are, are measured in, in uh, uh, tens of feet <laughs> instead of hundreds of feet, maybe. <laughs> but we have but, way more water. But we have three we sides have, water. We have plenty of water. Um, you know, and, and especially, you know, like where we live here in, southwest in the southwest in Naples area. Uh, what I always like to, to say about Naples is that we are, yeah, we have a big city inside of a small city. We have all of the things 
that you would find in the big city. We have the arts, we have the entertainment, we have the dining, world-class dining. We have, uh, you know, everything that you would find in those big cities, but you're in a small town. So, and it's so you really can nice. get around. Right. It doesn't feel as congested. Right. You can park. You can park. You know, you can go downtown and not pay exorbitant amounts for parking. Right. The parking garage is free. You uh, just find a spot. Right. Pull in. Yep. And you can get home quickly if you go to an event. Right. Because you're not mm -hmm. snarled up in the exit traffic. Right. And I think you do have that community feel. We talked about coming here to a local business. Right. And we have so many of them. And they can thrive in an area like this because people get to know them. Right. They're part of our community. And it's very synergistic. Yeah. So that's great. Well, what's that number for Florida? Because well, I'm not wearing my... 1.9%. So about 2% right. of, of the population, population change. has changed inbound migration. Right. And that outstrips all the other 50 states. Right. And probably not for the first time. No, they did not. And, you know, and that, that's obviously that's for the entire state of Florida. We're seeing and, and talking to, you know, our, our colleagues across the state uh, that are talking about very similar trends where they are as here um, and it's 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 very difficult to uh, for, for builders to keep up sometimes That's right. well that you make a really good point because one connection to that is that that continues to put a little bit of pressure on our inventory mm -hmm. of what housing is available right both of resale and of new construction mm -hmm. and we still need more right the, we're getting enough traffic coming in and people who are staying and maybe upsizing right sizing whatever they're doing right and so as homes get built, they are very much being sold pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. And our days on market still has not come back to historic averages. That's correct. And so there's a lot going on there. And I think keeping familiar with the local data is so important, both for current homeowners to right. understand the value of your property right. and for people who might be thinking about coming here, who I know are going to reach out to us and mm -hmm. we can talk to them more specifically about their situation. Right. But as you think about that data, thinking about days on market, understanding the pace of closings, mm -hmm. you know, one of the best ways to do that is to keep an eye on the monthly data. Right. And I think the best way that we can encourage people to do that is to look at this video right here in the upper right hand corner because we're talking here about the most recent data right. in Southwest Florida and the greater Naples area. And I don't want you to try to make a decision without the information you need. It's right here. Check it out. I'll meet you over there.